If you want to build a closer relationship with God, I'm going to teach you how to meditate on the word. I feel like a lot of the time when we pray as Christians to God, we tend to think of ourselves. We go to him looking for answers about ourselves and who we are. And yes, you're going to get that. But at the same time, it's important to also seek him and understand who he is. And when I say he, I mean God. Because sometimes when we keep our eyes on our situation, it looks scary. Like you could be going through a breakup, maybe you're graduating school or you're starting a new job and maybe you just lost your job. When we look at our situation, it can give us sometimes anxiety, stress and like hopelessness or fear. So when you meditate, when you pray to God, it's okay to like let all that come out. But when you meditate on the word, it's not about yourself, it's about him. So I'm going to give you five steps to follow uh, with meditation. I feel like a lot of the time with church and things like that, they just say like meditate on the word day and night, but they don't give you the action steps on like how to actually meditate. And so that's what I'm going to do for you guys today. I'm going to take you through how to properly meditate. I'm going to show you verses on meditation and then I'm going to give you five steps. Not that there's a proper way to meditate, but five steps to just growing closer with God through meditation just some verses on meditation in general in the bible i'm reading the christian standard bible version um is joshua 1 verse 8 it says this book of destruction must not depart from your mouth you are to meditate on it day and night so that you may carefully observe everything written in it for then you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do haven't i commanded you be strong and courageous do not be afraid or discouraged for the lord your god is with you wherever you go such good verses. So that's 8 through 9. The next one is Psalms 1 verse 2. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction and he meditates on it day and night. I think it's cool here that both these verses point out day and night. I'm doing a challenge where I read my Bible every morning and just like hang out with God and this is around like 6 a.m. in the morning. And when it hits nighttime, I'm like, I miss him again. Like I want to meditate with him again. It feels like I've gone too long without meditating with him or just being in his presence so i feel like that's why the bible clearly highlights day and night and the next one is psalms 49 verse 3 my mouth speaks wisdom my heart's meditation brings understanding so why i like this verse specifically is because it's talking about meditating from your heart and in order to meditate properly you have to have the correct heart posture and we're going to get it all into what that means and because if you're new you might not even know what i'm talking about right now and I feel like that's kind of where they leave it at church, like posture your heart right. But how do I posture my heart right? We're going to get into that. So we're going to start with the steps now. All of the steps I've written rely on scripture and are based off of what the Bible says. And this is what I personally do. You can find what works for you. It doesn't have to be exactly this, but if you're looking for somewhere to start, you have absolutely no idea what to do. Here's what I would suggest you do because this really works for me. So step one is to go into a dim room. Maybe it's a closet. I literally have a walk-in closet that I go into in my bedroom because I don't want to see like the mess of my house or like the dust on the floor. I don't know. I just go into a space that's not going to be distracting. It should be dim, so like fairly dark, but a little bit light because you're going to bring your Bible with you so you can read verses from it. And the only thing you're going to bring with you is your Bible. You can bring like a notepad and pen if you want to like jot down ideas or like visions that come but for right now i generally just bring my bible it's important to know that you don't bring your phone you don't have music playing you have no distractions like you want it to just be silent you and god maybe you have to go up into your car and do this because there's so many people in your house park down a quiet street or something but you just want to be alone and with not limited distractions so step two is to find verses on things that you just need to know about God. So this could be anything from what is God's character? Like who is God? And the Bible says that God is a gracious, compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness God. Like maybe you think he's mean and he's punishing you. So you need to go to verses that say who he is or something could be really heavy on your heart and you're just like, I need God, I need to know what you say about abandonment. Like I've been abandoned and I have these abandonment issues. I feel completely alone. I feel like you're not there for me anymore, God. If you're feeling abandoned or alone, you could read 1 John 4, 
16. Maybe you think God's mad at you, that he hates you, that he's forgotten about you, that he doesn't care about you anymore. Um, a verse for that could be Psalms 8, 86 verse 5. Or maybe, you know, you've reached your harvest, you're entering your harvest, and you feel so unqualified. Like, you just feel like, God, what am I doing here? How are you blessing me with these opportunities? Like, I'm not ready. I am not qualified for this. A verse for that would be 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 through 17. So pick anywhere from one to five verses that stick out to you, that you just want to meditate on, that you want to either learn more about who God is for you in that situation or just who God is in general. Now we're going to correct our heart posture. This is step three. We're going to block out your situation, your personal feelings, and your worries. This time is not to worry about you. This time is not to look at your circumstance. This time is not to think about the what ifs and what's happening and I'm depressed and I'm lonely and I'm scared and I'm... That is not what this meditation is. If you are going to meditate and those are the thoughts you are going to have, you're going to go crazy. The meditation is just going to put you in a worse spot than when you showed up because you're meditating on all this scary stuff. When we meditate on the word, we are meditating on God. Continue to renew your mind while you're meditating to who God is. So you sit down and it's like, okay, God is a loving and gracious father. Like, okay, but then why did my mom pass away? Then if you're so loving and gracious, why did you take her from me? When that starts to come in, and by the way, he didn't, the devil did. Like God does not kill, steal, and destroy. That's the devil. It's another topic though. We are not focused on that, and that right there is the wrong heart posture. Your heart posture needs to be, God is a gracious, loving, giving, kind, caring God. God is a gracious, kind, loving, caring, giving, caring, kind God. God is a loving, caring, giving. Like you are focusing on the characteristic, characteristics of who God is, of what his word is says he is. Let's say our Bible or our meditation is on Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, like say that over and over and over. And if what's coming to your head is I'm not righteous, like I barely believe in him. Like, no, you have the faith of a mustard seed. You are righteous. You sit there and you tell yourself like, because I have been declared righteous because of my faith. I am declared righteous. What does the Bible say about a righteous person? Go ahead and read, it's crazy. In Isaiah 26 verse three, so you will keep the mind that is dependent on you in perfect peace. This is exactly what I've been saying. The mind, so the human mind that is dependent on God is in perfect peace. So if when you're meditating, you're coming to God and you're bawling your eyes out and you're all this hurt and shame and there's all this like destruction in your life, you feel horrible, that's not meditating on God's word because God's word isn't destruction and horrible and terrible situations. It's peace, it's hope, it's love, it's kindness and confidence, it's um, success in business, relationships, health, everything. So to correct your heart posture, you need to keep your mind on who God is, not who you are, not, who, not in what your situation is, but who does the Bible say that God is? God is a redeemer. He's a miracle worker. He can move mountains. Like you're focusing on him in this moment. And I'm really trying to drill that into your head because as much as you try to meditate, the thoughts like the enemy will shoot thoughts like, yeah, but you're still broke. Yeah, but you're still like in this horrible relationship. Yeah, but you're still going through this like family death and you need to cut those words out. The next step is step four, and this is gonna really help you like stay focused on the word. Speak each word out loud. So every word you read, every thought you think, say it out loud. So while you're reading scripture, praying, talking to God, questions or thoughts that come to mind, say them out loud. Because sometimes I'll be answering questions that I never knew I was asked. So in one of my meditations, I realized that I was idolizing something that wasn't God. Um, it was actually God's plan for me, but I still wasn't, I was only coming to God to know what my plan was, not to just know God. And that's not a good thing, it's idolizing it still. And so I was answering questions like, of course I love you, what do you mean? And I didn't realize, but 
it's like holy spirit i don't hear anyone audibly talking to me but it's like impressions on your heart like i don't know it's hard to explain but holy spirit's just kind of like guiding you through like your brain through a process and it's like of course i love you god and then the verse came to me it was seek first the kingdom of god and all else will come and i was like well, of course, I, of course, seek first. I have been asking, like, what your plan is for me, but then it hit me, like, oh, I have been coming to you just to know you. I've been coming to you just to know my plan. And then it also hit me, like, because then another outside thought will come in and be like, okay, but how am I supposed to spend all my time with you? I have work to be doing. And then the verse came back, seek first the kingdom of God, and all else is going to come. What are you worried about? Money? Relationships? Jobs? What are you worried about? Your health? If you seek me first, all of that's coming. And I was like, hmm. So, but everything you're thinking, all the thoughts that come into your head, all the scripture you're reading, say it out loud because when we close our eyes and we let our mind go, our mind can just kind of go in whatever direction and it gets really um, distracted easily. And when you speak, you can't think. So like, if you're thinking and you start speaking it out loud, your mind automatically starts focusing on what you're saying. And the Bible said that, says that there's life and death in the power of the tongue. And so what you're speaking during this meditation is who God is and who God is for you. It's not your situation. It's not how horrible your situation is. You must be very careful and speak the word. And if you don't believe it, sit there and say, God, you're a redeemer. I don't believe it. I don't see it in my own life, but you're a redeemer. You are going to redeem me. You are a redeemer. You are going to redeem me. You have redeemed me. I am redeemed. Even though you don't believe it, you don't see it in your life, you have absolutely no idea maybe what you're talking about, you just speak it. The mouth are the eyes to the heart. So what you say, what you think, what you believe is what affects your heart. So that's why you have to be careful with what you say. And lastly, so step number five is to invite Holy Spirit in. So thank Holy Spirit for his presence. Holy Spirit is your helper. So your Holy Spirit is the one that communicates with you, who's gonna go before you in a situation, who's gonna be behind you, beside you, and also dwells within your heart. So Holy Spirit's like our little helper. And when we cry and when we're broken down, like tears are prayers to God and Holy Spirit translate those prayers to God. And um, cause like sometimes we don't know what to say when we're praying. And you're just like, Holy Spirit, help me. Like, I don't even know what I don't know right now. Like, I'm just so down bad. And Holy Spirit will will help you and translate all that to God. And you don't have to worry about it. But, so thank Holy Spirit for his presence in your life in general. And also just dwelling with you through this meditation. Um, ask Holy Spirit now for just guidance, for visions, dreams. Maybe you want, like, to just be more in tune with him. Like, Ask Holy Spirit, like, how am I going to build a better relationship with you so I can rely and hear you better? And then after that, just be still and silent. Um, listen, focus on the scripture you read until maybe more scripture comes to mind or questions come to mind, thoughts come to mind. Because this is kind of Holy Spirit's time to start kind of speaking to you. If you don't feel anything, you don't hear anything, you're just like, I don't really know what this is then just continue to focus on the scripture you've been reading. Thank God and Holy Spirit that you're one step to getting closer to them and you're one step closer to hearing them and sensing them. It seems like a foreign thought when um, like that seek first the kingdom of God and also come to him like why that scripture right now? And that's like Holy Spirit like being like, hey, remember this? Like, cause when you're asking these questions like, well, what the heck? He'll send you answers through scripture, but that's also why it's important to know God's word because God's word is living and breathing and alive. Um, it's literally him talking to us. So if you don't know scripture, it can be hard to really hear Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit is going to speak to you through the scripture that God has written out for us in the Bible. And then Matthew 6 verses 6, it actually teaches us how to pray. But this relates to step one and it's it says, but when you pray, go into your private room, shut your door, and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't babble like the Gentiles, since they imagine they'll be heard for their many words. Don't be like them, because your father knows the things you need before you ask him. Like, when you go to sit down with God, he already knows what you need. He already knows what you want. He already knows everything. Like, he's God. 
So that's why when you sit down and sit there and be like, God, I want this and this and this, like he knows. Who is he? Who is God? What does he say about you? What does he say about himself? What's he gonna do for you? When that blessing comes, what should you do with it? Like meditation isn't a time to be focused on yourself. It's a time to be focused on him. And I'm drilling that again into your head because it's very, very important. I hope these steps help you guys. Comment any questions you still have. Let me know if you try it and how it goes for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.